Did Jeff Keighley move the Game Awards date so that God of War Ragnarok could be in contention? That is the claim that has been made by several people on Twitter, and I'll just say it right now, it's not true at all. You can actually go to the website right now and see that it is still November 19th, 2021. They haven't even updated the dates for 2022. But I wanted to talk about the larger conversation about Game of the Year awards and what's going on with these claims. So let's talk a little bit about what happened with Keeley. Uh, it's been slow. Somebody actually suggested this story, but they suggested that it was within the same vein as what was going on with the God of War Ragnarok devs, which was disgusting. And I do not agree with that. But I do think it is a story worth discussing because of this weird cutoff date of November 19th. Let's uh, let's dive in right now. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. If you like my content, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell to know when it goes live. Did you know something like 76% of people don't do that? They don't hit that subscribe button, hit that bell, right? Look at that, look at the animation. I play it every time. Help me out. Hit that subscribe button, hit that bell to know when the content goes live. Let's talk about the content. So basically, this is what's been going on on Twitter. This is from July 6th. It is a few days old now. Uh, Robert Morrison posted Game of the Year contenders, Elden Ring, God of War Ragnarok, Horizon Forbidden West, and The Last of Us Part 1. And then We Are All Ukrainians uh, tweeted, Funny how Jeff Keighley extended deadline for Game of the Year just to fit God of War in there. Interesting, where did you hear that? And there were a few tweets about this idea that the, the awards were extended. You said Forza missed the cutoff date, Jeff. What is it, my guy? You're confusing your audience. Forza was eligible last year and won an award even. I think it actually won two awards, Jeff. Forza was nominated and won an award. You guys are off base. So a lot of people were like, why did the date move for God of War Ragnarok? Because God of War Ragnarok is 1109 and the cutoff is 1119. If you actually go to the website, what is the cutoff date for games to be eligible this year? Games are eligible. Uh... Games eligible for the Game Awards this year must be available for public consumption on or before November 19th, 2021. Titles that are released after this date will be eligible for the Game Awards ceremony in 2022. Similarly, games that were released in December 2020 are first eligible for this year's rewards. So you add a year basically to everything, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, so basically what it's saying is uh, anything released on or before... November 19, 2021. So God of War falls well within that realm as God of War Ragnarok is going to be releasing. Uh, what is it? The 8th? Where Where's the date? I just read the date. So anyway, God of War Ragnarok is coming out uh, shortly. But a lot of people were talking about how they think that nominations were extended to November 19th. Eligibility last year extended until November 19th. And if we actually go back to this Windows Central article, the Game Awards snub of Forza Horizon 5 is a disservice to the entire game industry. A marketing event and nothing more. This was by Jez Corden, who was upset because Forza Horizon uh, just didn't have a chance. Forza Horizon at the end of the year was a phenomenal game. It won IGN's Game of the Year award. I voted for it. Um, and I think Forza Horizon 5 was probably the best title within that window. I'm going to talk about my opinion about the fact that game awards close in November and how most people just don't get that. But anyway, let's talk about what happened last year because that's where we're at right now. A marketing event, nothing more. I received some additional information since posting this, which adds clarity and context as to why Forza didn't make the grade. I've included it at the bottom of this article. The Game Awards has increasingly positioned itself as the de facto award show for the gaming industry, turning itself into something of a mini winter e3 in the process there's tons of reveals during this thing some of the awards are just like offhandedly mentioned because there's so much content that jeff packs into these shows how exactly are the awards chosen though well the game award uses a jury panel consisting of media influencers and outlets which includes some of our colleagues at games radar and pc gamer no less who vote on the nominees for top accolades they also cast votes for who actually wins the awards with a mere 10% of the vote weight going to the public, you know, the people who actually play and buy the games in mass. 
If I wasn't questioning the Game Awards candidacy for becoming the Oscars of the gaming industry before, I certainly am now after seeing them snub the top rated game in 2021, Forza Horizon 5. And let's just let's just go down to his update because this is a, a really long piece, right? Updated November 17th. Since posting this article, I received a flurry of information from members of the Game Awards jury, as well as game developers themselves, which adds more important context as why Forza specifically didn't make the grade this year. Jeff Keighley has stated on Twitter that Forza Horizon 5 was indeed eligible for this year's awards, with the cutoff date being set for November 19th. However, game journalists were told that they had to submit their ticket, their picks by November 4th. Forza Horizon 5's early access period didn't begin until November 5th, which calls into question just how much eligibility it had in real terms. In Keeley's defense, they do include additional information in the email packed jury members, informing them that ballots can be altered up until November 11th. However, I was told that this information isn't highlighted clearly enough and not enough time was given in general. My take, I get it. It's tough to build award shows to line up timings, review embargoes and all that on top of the existing busy Q4 period. That just accentuates my point that if jury members didn't have enough time to properly assess a game that is eligible in 2021, but won't be eligible in 2022, it calls into question the general fairness of the award process. I highly encourage you to go read this piece from Jess Corden. Uh, some of you might just write it off as a salty fanboy upset that uh, Forza didn't get it. But I want to talk about just the general population of people. They don't know about all this stuff going on behind closed doors. And when you hear about an award show, you would think, and it's not just Keeley that does this, by the way, you would think a game of the year award show is from January through the end of the year, all 365 days or whatever it is on a leap year, right? 364 or something, right? So I tweeted something snarky last year and I actually, I actually remember tweeting it because I like to be snarky when I'm trying to make a point. And game of the year and game of the January to November 1st goes to and when you read Jez's article about how the process works, well, your ballots are due the fifth, but if you want to write in and do all this extra work to nominate another game that comes out during this weird time, and like with all your other responsibilities in life, uh, it really sets up any game that comes out in that period in a negative light. Now, I believe God of War Ragnarok is going to be an absolutely phenomenal game this year. I don't think it's going to suffer from the same issues that Forza Horizon did at the time because... Of course, there will be early access for the people who are voting. And I do think it'll it'll definitely win, if not game of the year. Well, I think Elden Ring's pretty much a lock, but uh God of War Ragnarok is definitely a contender. I think it'll be those two, in my opinion, uh, unless somehow they spectacularly manage to mess up God of War Ragnarok. I just have a lot of confidence in one that that studio has created. And the original God of War is one of my favorites. But the larger question I have is. And many people have this question is why close it in November? Why not do awards the first week of January? And the question is sort of multifaceted. This is in my, my opinion and also largely what I've seen happen, you know, throughout the years, my years in the industry. I think part of it is that there are sponsors willing to sponsor things around the time frame of when the show would air late November, you have Thanksgiving, a lot of people are off. December, maybe you could do it. But by January, people want to hear about new stuff. They don't necessarily want to go through the award cycle. So you have sponsorships to think about. You have the fact that your audience is going to be much smaller in December because people have traveled all over the world. And those two things combined, to me, are the main reasons that this occurs, where awards happen in November as opposed to December or January. Now, in an ideal world, I would like to see awards happen January through December and then take place in January of 2023, for example, this year. But that's just not what's going to happen. So I get why people are confused and upset. They're like, well, wait, so like God of War is going to be able to be nominated this year. I don't understand why they think the date moved, but I do get why it's a little weird because the date should just be. January through December, but that's just not what it is. So if somebody could explain to me why these award shows open in November 19th and they go until uh, the following November 19th, as opposed to just January to December, I would love some insight there. 
is it what is it what I said? Is it sponsorships and audience? Is that the main reason why these don't air in January? Is there a reason that they need to air in November? And like, <laughs> I work on some of these productions and I actually don't know why that happens. So I have to imagine that that is part of it. It's, it's those considerations that need to be made for the larger audience. And I don't like it. But apparently, Revolt actually responded last year to my thing. He said, November 20th, 21st, Destin, it's a year. The same as the Golden Globes, Oscars, Emmys, TV Awards, Sports Awards. And why is it November to November? That's when the award show is. So it looks back over the previous 12 months. It's a bad month to have it as it's when the bigger games come out, but it's still a year in review. Why not have them in February 2022 then? There's no reason to change the definition of a calendar year to suit your business needs and call something game of the year. I've always thought it was silly. I get why it's dumb, but I don't like it and never really have. Rarely will anything from November 2020 to like February 1st, 2021 have much of a shot. It's always backloaded awards from the last months of the year. It makes sense. As humans, we remember what happened more recently in a better way. I don't think it's great for those early games, though. So, like, let's be honest. This year, for any of the, the game of the year contenders, uh, like Halo Infinite has no chance of winning anything because Halo Infinite, like, if it's it's not going to be nominated for the game of the year, it's just not because we have the benefit of hindsight. We've seen, okay, well, it didn't launch with campaign co-op, but at the time it was like really exciting to play that campaign, right? But then a year later, it's like, oh, well now it's up against Elden Ring and all these other properties. Now, if it was in last year's pool, I do feel like it had a chance for at least runner up, but you know, I voted for Forza Horizon 5 and I was really torn bet between Forza Horizon 5 and Halo Infinite. I'm just a big Halo fan, but at the end of the day, I voted for Forza. So that's my take on the situation. And I just wanted to sort of say, hey, I'm I'm a person in the industry who votes on these game of the year things. And I don't particularly like that they close in November. I think it should be January through December. And I mean, are there just really no sponsors that want to sponsor a January show? Is the audience gone? I, I don't get why it has to happen that way. And I don't know why somebody just doesn't change it. <laughs> it doesn't make sense to most people, right? I think most people are just happy to have an award show with a ton of announcements, but uh, it I don't think it makes sense to most people. Maybe some people get, maybe you get it out there. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, but for me, like I, I think God of War is, has the potential to be a game of the year contender. I think uh, Elden Ring is one that will be in people's memory throughout the year from software, you know, amazing developer, but Let's see what happens at the end of the year. Are people going to remember the game that they literally just played when they go into that ballot box? Or are they going to remember the game that they played a year prior? That, that's a tough question. And uh, I, th I think in my experience, I'm always going to remember the game that I played more recently. Maybe it's because I'm getting older and I just can't remember things from a year ago. But uh, <laughs> yeah, let me know what you think in the comments below about this whole situation. I do think it's an interesting topic to discuss. I don't think Jeff's doing anything heinous. So leave Jeff Keeley alone if you're if you're getting him a lot of grief about this, because you can go to the website and just look. It's it's November 19th. Um, the whole process is a little it's a little tricky to run a, a live production. So um yeah, talk about it, think about it, and let me know what you think. Let's talk about it here. Thank you so much for watching. Hit that subscribe button. All 75% of you who aren't subscribed, I'd really appreciate it. You get to know when the content goes live. You get to help the channel out. You hit that bell. You know what? When you like stuff, when you interact in the comments, all that stuff is good for the channel. So do that with content creators you like. I do appreciate it. Uh, watch when I talk about the memberships that are turned on. Thank you so much to all the members that support this channel. If you want to become a member and support the Destin channel, You've already subscribed. You already hit that bell. Hit that join button. And then you can uh, participate with the members in supporting the channel. And I will upload these videos with no ads because I know some of you don't like ads. But I'm going to get out of here. That is my two cents for this video. Thanks for watching, everybody. And I'll see you for the next one.